Now we're going to build the voltage clamp system and we're going to see how it works. And we're going to do it on this squid giant axon. Now for simplicity, I only have potassium channels in the axon. Later on, we'll introduce sodium channels as well. But just for illustrative purposes, we're only going to have potassium channels. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to insert a wire or an electrode all the way down the length of the axon. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to impale the axon with a microelectrode and we're going to measure its membrane potential, that is the difference between the charge on the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. The outside, of course, is, is seawater that's bathing it, and it's going to be measured by that little device up there that says measure VM, VM being the membrane potential, and we're going to actually look at the membrane potential up here on this little chart, or little graph, if you will. All right? Okay, simple enough so far. The next thing I'm going to introduce, though, is a new element. This is called a difference amplifier, and this is a critical player in the whole system. It has two inputs, a negative input and a positive input. And what it's going to do is take the two inputs and it's going to subtract them. And it's going to put out a current proportional to the voltage difference at the inputs. Right? We'll see how that plays out in just a moment. So what goes into the inputs? Well, into the first input, we're going to put the membrane potential. All right? So the membrane potential goes into the negative input. What goes into the positive input? A new device, a device we have to build or go to Radio Shack and buy. It's a command voltage. And that command voltage is going to be operated by the commander over here, this little guy down here. And the commander can press any button. He can press minus 70, which would be rest. He can press minus 10. He can press minus 20. He can press any button he wants to. And that button, in turn, will be the command signal or command voltage. And that command voltage will then be put into the positive input of the difference amplifier. So the difference amplifier is going to look at the difference between the membrane potential and some command voltage that we give it, and it's going to put out a current proportional to the voltage difference at its inputs. And we're going to take that voltage difference to the output of that difference amplifier, and we're going to put it into the wire. And thus we can pass current into the wire that will simultaneously pass current and depolarize or hyperpolarize the entire membrane at exactly the same time. So we're going to get rid of the time element or the space element. There's not going to be any spatial distribution. When we change the charge across the membrane, it's going to be changed across the entire axon at exactly the same time. Finally, we need to add one last element to this, and it's a very, very important one. It's an ammeter. In other words, we're going to actually be measuring the amount of current put out by the differential amplifier for reasons that will become apparent in the next slide. The point is that current out of the cell, that is positive current that leaves the cell, will be indicated by an upward deflection and positive current into the cell that comes into the cell will be indicated by a downward deflection. The ammeter measures the current put out by the difference amplifier, and that's what we're actually going to be looking at and measuring. So as a first example, let's take something really, really simple, all right? Let's have the commander press the minus 70 millivolt button. There he goes. Presses minus 70 millivolts, and there's minus 70 millivolts that appears at the positive input, the positive is minus 70, the negative is minus... There's no difference. So as a consequence of that, there's no voltage difference at the input, so there's no current output. Watch the ammeter. Nothing. It remains flat. And watch the membrane potential way up in the right-hand corner. It remains flat. There's no change. Okay. Now let's set the command voltage to minus 10 millivolts and see what happens. Commander presses minus 10. The command voltage is minus 10. There's a large voltage difference now 
at the inputs of the differential amplifier, so a large positive current is put out. I've delayed it, but it would actually happen immediately. Watch. And that positive current, then, changes the membrane potential, and it changes it immediately across the entire axon to minus 10 millivolts. Look, up in the right-hand corner, the membrane potential is shot up to minus 10 millivolts. Now there is no difference between the command voltage and the membrane potential. They're both minus 10, and the difference amplifier doesn't have to put anything else out. However, just after the membrane potential is changed to minus 10 millivolts, the potassium channels open, and the flow of current through the potassium channels at what we were interested in. The reason the potassium channels open is because they're voltage-gated. The inside of the cell has now become depolarized, and it's going to open those voltage-gated channels. Watch. Here they go. They're going to open, and when they open, there's going to be an efflux of potassium removing positive charges from inside the cell, making it more negative. That is going to be sensed by the differential amplifier. That slight change in membrane potential is immediately sensed by the difference amplifier. And immediately, the difference amplifier sends out a current. And that current is a positive current. And the whole idea here is that the injective positive charges replace the positive charges lost by the efflux of potassium, thereby preventing the membrane potential from changing. Look at the membrane potential in the upper right corner. It's constant. It doesn't change, because for each potassium that's lost, a potassium, a positive charge, will replace it through the electrode injected by the differential amplifier. And if we look at the ammeter, there's an initial rise in positive charges, that is, positive charges in, that is, positive charges out of the cell, actually, that we have to replace, and it remains that way because the potassium channels are open. Now let's insert both sodium and potassium channels in the membrane and see what happens. Okay, now we have sodium and potassium channels, and we clamp the membrane potential at minus 10 millivolts. The inside is minus 10 millivolts. So the command potential and the, and the membrane potential are equal, and the difference amplifier isn't putting out anything at the moment. However, the sodium and potassium channels will open. First, the sodium channels will open, and that's going to bring in an influx of positive charges. And that slight change in membrane potential, again, is immediately sensed by the difference amplifier, which puts out negative charges. Those negative charges negate the positive charges. As a consequence, the membrane potential doesn't change. It's gained positive, but it's gained an equal number of negative charges. The membrane potential is not changing. The inward sodium current is shown on the ammeter, and what that means is that we have to put in negative charges. That's why it's a downward deflection to compensate for the inward flow of positive charges carried by sodium due to the opening of the sodium channels. Now, a moment later, the inactivation gates close and the potassium channels open. They remove positive charges from the cell, making the inside of the cell more negative. And that slight change in membrane potential is immediately sensed by the difference amplifier, which now puts out a positive charge, the positive charges replacing the positive charges lost by potassium. And hence, you now get an outward current carried by potassium, shown as the purple line on the ammeter. This is the classic example of the flows of current that underlie the action potential. An inward sodium current followed by an outward potassium current. These are the currents that are generated in a voltage clamp. Look at the voltage. The membrane potential hasn't changed at all. It's clamped. It can't change. For every positive in, you put a negative in, and for every positive out carried by potassium, you put a positive in. The membrane potential is clamped, but we measure the currents that are flowing, the currents that we have to replace or negate the inward or outward flow of current with, and that's the whole idea. Next, let's clamp the membrane potential at plus 55 millivolts. That's the sodium equilibrium potential. And let's see what happens.
Okay, so we're going to clamp it at plus 55. The inside of the cell is plus 55. Look at the membrane potential in the far right corner. It is shot up to plus 55 millivolts. All right, remember, these are voltage-sensitive channels. They're open by depolarization. So again, the first thing that happens is the sodium channels open. And watch what happens with sodium. Nothing. Sodium comes in, but it's bounced right back out. That is... There's no influx of sodium because for every sodium driven in by its concentration force, one is driven out by the electrical force, the positivity inside the cell. There is no inward sodium current. Look at the ammeter. Now the inactivation gates close and the potassium channels open and there is a huge outflow of potassium. Why is it huge? Very simple. It's huge because there's such an enormous driving force driving it out. It is driven both by its concentration force, because it's more concentrated on the inside than the outside, and it's repelled by the very positive charge on the inside of the cell. And we have to replace those positive charges through the electrode inside the axon. And hence, we get a very large outward positive uh, current carried by potassium, as shown by the purple line in the ammeter record. So these are the classic records of current flows underlying the action potential obtained by Hodgkin and Huxley. When the membrane potential is minus 10 millivolts, you get a total current composed of an inward sodium current followed by an outward potassium current. However, when the membrane potential is clamped at plus 55, you only get a potassium current. There's no sodium current because we're at the sodium equilibrium potential. And from records like these, Hodgkin Huxley surmised that the sodium channels must have an activation gate that initially opens, followed by an inactivation gate that closes. And they also surmised that the potassium channels must be a little slower than the sodium channels. You can see it. The purple record starts a little slower than did the bottom record, the dashed black line. The slowness, on the other hand, has no inactivation gate. That is, it opens. It opens a little slower, but it remains open so long as the cell is depolarized. So all of the currents that I should do, all the channels that we've gone through so far, were discovered by Hodgkin and Huxley. They were discovered on the basis of these kinds of records obtained under voltage clamp conditions. It is quite remarkable. In the next set of movies, you're going to see actual experiments, actual records obtained by Hodgkin and Huxley. These are old and they're classic, but they're well worth seeing. Hodgkin and Huxley found that as the electrode entered the axon, a negative potential with respect to the external seawater of about 65 millivolts was obtained. This was the resting potential of the axon, and although its existence had long been suspected, this was the first time it had been directly measured. Moreover, when the axon was stimulated, the action potential did not simply fall to zero during the impulse, but became positive with respect to the outside, shown by the overshoot of the action potential. This important discovery suggested that the nerve membrane which at rest is mainly permeable to potassium becomes primarily permeable to another ion during excitation. This other ion is sodium, since if its concentration in the external solution was lowered, the action potential immediately became smaller, by an amount depending on the sodium concentration. If, as these experiments suggest, the action potential was dependent on the passage of ions across the membrane, it was obviously important to measure the currents carried by these ions. To do this, it is necessary to hold the internal potential at a chosen value. This is the powerful voltage clamp technique. As a change of potential is imposed on the axon, as seen in the top trace, the currents flowing across the membrane are revealed in the bottom trace. The early downward dip, seen on the left, is the transient current carried by the influx of sodium ions and it is superseded by an opposite and persistent current attributed to the outward flow of potassium.